Okay, y'all, we are about to go deep on faceless video today. Everything that you need to know, the complete faceless video blueprint with a good friend of mine, Scott Simpson. I have known this guy for a couple of years now. Uh, I, we, we got connected, I think, originally uh, through the, the Video Marketing World Facebook group. I had got, so Scott is, uh, is uh, owner of Video Marketing World, which by the way, you might've seen my announcement where we're becoming business partners and we're switching it to AI Marketing World, uh, which is gonna be next October in the Dallas area, which is gonna be super exciting. Uh, about that. But uh, Scott and I have become friends. We've been clients of one another. He is one of the best YouTube agencies uh, in the world. He's he has worked with, uh, I can say his name. I, I think, he, I don't know if you, you feel good about it, but uh, Scott has helped uh, Alex Hermosi on his YouTube channel and has worked with um, Russell Brunson, I believe, and some just absolutely uh, stellar, stellar uh, creators and, and businesses. This guy is one of the best YouTube experts that you may or may not have heard of yet, but you're about to see why he's, he's so talented. Um, as a YouTube consultant with over 400,000 followers and CEO of Rafiti Media, Scott Simpson is recognized as a YouTube and video marketing expert. He is responsible for helping generate hundreds of millions of views and millions of dollars in revenue, both personally and for his clients. Scott has worked with big brands such as Amazon, HEB, Mattel, VTech, and many others, and has been featured in CBS, Money Watch, San Francisco Chronicle, the New York Daily News, and Boston Globe. I am so excited. Make sure you ask your questions, everybody, all things Faceless Video. Scott, the floor is yours, my friend. Well, spectacular. Thank you very much for the warm introduction, uh, Austin. Appreciate it. And um uh, Austin, you're also the real deal, brother. Like, I I know that you you know when we first met, you were you were relatively like small in terms of social influence then, and then it was like you just boop 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 and exploded, and that's how that's how fast that you can climb on social media right now, you guys. If if you're not creating social media content, if you're not building your own influence, then uh, the the people who are are going to drown your voice. Like you you won't have a voice. You won't have a say. And so it's really like social influence is now currency. And I I I hate to say that. I hate to admit that. But if you don't have social influence, then in some circles and in some mindsets, you can become irrelevant. Your voice can become irrelevant. And that, that's a scary thing to think about, but it also is a, a motivating thing to think about. Um, now, today we're going to be talking about faceless channels, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't put together a presentation because I put together an entire blueprint framework that I'm going to go through, and then I'm actually going to give give it to you guys. And it's got links, and it's got visuals, and it's got all sorts of crazy cool stuff. But I, I sometimes with presentations, I'm like, I can just barely scrape the surface and then you get these high level things, these concepts that you're like, oh, I forgot about that. And I don't understand. So I, I'm like, no, I'm going to do a guide with my friend, with my my good friend, ChatGPT. He, he helped me uh, organize my thoughts and put it all together. But um, I, I'm going to give you this entire guide so it can be like a companion to this video. And the Austin, the replays are, you, you give out the replay, right? Perfect. So, so this is going to be like a, a training session where I'm going to, I'm going to go through this like course and we're going to do this over the next hour. And my goal by the end of it is that you have the tools that you need in order to build uh, a, a, a faceless, a successful faceless YouTube channel. And I also link to resources and all sorts of cool stuff in there. So very excited to do that. Um, now, before, before I get into that, I'm going to share my screen in just a second. Before I get into that, and I'm, I'm looking over there. Sorry, I should look over here. Before I get into that, I, I want to tell you guys, uh, I have been very fortunate in social media space. Uh, we we have built YouTube channels uh, into the hundreds of thousands. I've worked on YouTube channels and helped people build their, their social clout into the millions of subscribers. We have almost a billion views that we have ideated with our clients, um, for, for both personally and for clients. And so I have a lot of experience and credibility in this space. And one of the things that I kind of like to say in the beginning is that I'm not just a talker. I'm not just a teacher. I'm an actual doer. 
And so when you're, when you're looking for advice from somebody, and this is why I like Austin so much, uh, when you're looking for advice, somebody in the space, there are a lot of people who have had maybe one video that did really well. And now they have, they're selling a $1,500 course on how to blow up your social media. Uh, and there's not a lot of experience to back up the things that they're saying. And uh, most of my, uh, all, all, everything that I teach is stuff that I'm I'm doing. Uh, my, my core philosophy, one of my core philosophies is that an effective teacher also must be a doer. So I am actively creating content. In fact, I had a video a couple months ago that did 54 million views um on tiktok and so i'm i'm still <laughs> i'm still actively creating and and again everything that i'm teaching you today comes from experience so with that said it's not to pat me on the back but you know it is a little bit no uh, with that said uh let me share my screen and let's get into this let's get into this training <clears throat> Okay, now this is going to look, I just want to give you a, a, a fair warning. This is going to look a little bit dense and uh, I'm not going to go every, over everything word for word. Uh, but again, I wanted you guys to have this. I wanted you to have a comprehensive training that you could you could be able to download later on because if if, if I expect you to be able to use this, I want to make sure that, that it's pretty comprehensive. So we've got, I don't know how many pages this is. Let's see here. Uh, seven pages, seven pages of training here with visuals. And then I actually have created a bunch of like extra resources with links that you guys can also take a look at and see, but let's just dive in. So one of the, uh, the things that you need to focus on first with faceless and actually before I, before I start sharing this, I want to say some things about faceless YouTube. So we live in an era generation right now where uh, faceless YouTube content is becoming easier and easier to create. Uh, there are resources, uh, softwares out there like syllabi that can create videos for you. That one of the, one of the things that, one of the, uh, areas of caution that I will say is that if, if AI, if, if, if AI can help you build out a complete YouTube channel, it's a very low barrier of entry. That will typically mean that a lot of people are going to do it and it's going to saturate the market. So there are some things that you need to be thinking about if you want to go in this direction. And the first thing that you want to be thinking about is uniqueness. How can you bring a unique value proposition to your content to make sure that it stands out from everybody else and to also make sure that other people don't just come in and steal your content using AI, right? You can you can have AI read a transcript and then rewrite a transcript and then boom, you've got a, a, a competitive YouTube channel. Uh, so how do you ensure that AI doesn't do that or that makes it more difficult? Uh, that is, that's through uniqueness. And, um, and this is going to become more and more important over the next five, 10 years as AI continues to build up steam and take over more and more of the content strategies that people are using as their, as their, their roadmap for social media content. So there's a few things that I want to say here, just with unique value proposition, uh, the goal is to be unique. So don't just copy what everybody else is doing. If you copy what everybody else is doing, that means that you're copyable. Uh, you start with popular trends. Um, so here's some like tactics, right? Start with popular trends, but approach from a different angle. What are some emerging topics that you can stay on top of? What are the things that you can become first to the market with? That might mean that you're doing uh, top 10 features of the iPhone 16. As soon as they drop uh, any hint of the iPhone 16, you're doing a video of it. That's first to the market. What are things that are currently popular that uh, 10 dumb things that politicians said last week? Heaven knows if you live in America, you have been seeing nothing but politics in your Twitter feed, on social media, everything. What are top 10 things that politicians said that were dumb in the last week? That's that's relevant. You can become first to the market with those. So we, this is one tactic that you can use. What's popular that you can approach with a different angle? Okay. Pain points. So here's another thing that you can you can dive into. Dive into blog comments. Quora. Uh, Reddit is another one. Am Amazon reviews. Uh, Amazon reviews can be a great source of content, believe it or not. And so when we're talking about unique 
content or unique channel ideas, can you make an entire faceless channel just purely based off of Amazon reviews? 100% absolutely. There's a, there's a, a product on Amazon. I think it's like it's some gummy bear and um, the comments on this product are hilarious. Talk about how they ate these gummy bears right before they took a test and all of a sudden they felt this rumble in their stomach and they had to run to the bat. Like it, it's, it's hilarious. There's a lot of great uh, content uh, opportunities on Amazon. So this is unique. You could be the first of the market with something like that. And those are very hard to copy because it's, it's, there's, there's one review that if, and if you're, if you're creating content on it, then it, it makes it difficult for other people to, to make content without looking like a copycat. Okay. Cross niche content. Think about two seemingly unrelated fields and figure out how they can intersect. Let me show you an example of that. So uh, I, this is one of my personal videos. Uh, seven years ago, I created this video that was a, a, a unicorn horn retainer. So I owned an orthodontic lab. I used to make retainers for kids who were getting out of braces. This isn't faceless, but I'll, I'll tell you anyway. Uh, I used to make br uh, retainers for kids who were getting out of braces. And I was like, why not combine art with this this profession. And I did that and it got 2.9 million views. And this video alone made me about $6,000. So this is a good example of cross niche content. I'm combining art and I'm combining, uh, I'm combining it with, with, um, with, uh, uh orthodontic te lab tech type of content. And if you look at any lab tech type of content, for the most part, they all get a couple thousand views because not a lot of people are interested in it. All right, so uh, technology in old niches. Okay, update older topics with new tools, apps, or technology. For example, if home organization is an evergreen niche, update it with minimal minimalist home organization using AI tools, right? How can you put a new twist on something that has a lot of, it's, it's got a very large foundation. Most, most YouTube, faceless YouTube gurus are going to teach you go into the horror category and make scary stories go into the police category and uh show clips of high speed pursuits go into the finance industry and talk about uh talk about uh, wolf of wall street and do the 8000th documentary on whatever his name is i don't remember his name now the the wolf of wall street right most of those people are going to tell you to do that because those markets have traditionally been very hot they've done really well and I'm telling you right now, if they're telling you to do that, to go into these industries and start copying, they're telling that to everybody. And there's going to be a mass saturation on a lot of these traditional topics. So you have to always be thinking new, 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 new. And again, you guys, if you're just coming in here, uh, I want to make sure that you understand that this whole roadmap, um, you're, it's going to be available to you. So you guys will be able to see it with all the linked resources and all of the extra the additional information that we put in here. So uh, again, I didn't put together a traditional presentation because I, I want to make sure that you have something that is like tangible. You can print all this stuff out, hold it in your hands and you can go through it like a, like a checklist. All right. Um, okay. Combining what you love with current demand. So you can, you can, Talk about the things that you're passionate about, and uh, and that all automatically gives you a leg up. I play Ultimate Frisbee. I've been playing Ultimate Frisbee since 2012. Um, I'm trying out for a professional team next year, and uh, I love Ultimate Frisbee. There are not a lot of people in the world who know Ultimate Frisbee at the level that I know Ultimate Frisbee at. So if I were to start a faceless channel breaking down film from ultimate frisbee games number one there's not gonna be a huge demand for that because there's like very few ultimate frisbee fans <laughs> in the world so it's not gonna be a huge niche but i would i could corner the market and and be in the 0.01 percent of people who uh, could could do that so just uh, what are you passionate about factor that into the equation because that automatically gives you a leg up and then again anybody else who tries to copy you is going to look like a copycat all right. The other thing here, this is a, this is another one. Uh, look at undeserved or non-English speaking markets for ideas that haven't hit saturation. Okay. So check this out. Here's a uh, here's a video. Um, this guy. Let me see what, what's his name. Do I have it here? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. The Market Whisper. Okay. So if you look at his channel, The Market Whisper, 
this guy created one video. He actually staked a claim on, on Twitter. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to make one video and it's going to go viral. And uh, he created this documentary called How Japanese Housewives Outsmarted Global Finance. Uh, and it got 2.6 million views. W there's only one video on his channel. This is it. 2.6 million views. And there's like 40 some thousand subscribers. But th this is a perfect example of how non-English speaking markets, there are cultural trends that are happening all across the world. And us, you know, Americans are always like, we're talking about the same things all the time because that's what we're seeing on social media. That's what's hitting us 24 seven. And, uh, and in reality, what's hitting us in the United States is not necessarily hitting the, the Japanese market or the German market or the, even the Australian market. There could be things that are happening in these different countries that if you pick up on it and you can create a piece of content around, you do some research, create a piece of content around, you could completely own them, own the English speaking market for something that's foreign related. Huge, huge opportunity in this market, in, in this, in this category. So write that down, take a note because that, that's a, that's a, a big bonus tip that if you guys want to tap into a market like this, go study some other culture and what is happening for them, what's culturally relevant to them right then. Do an expose on their prime minister or an expose on a mayor of a town of a, of a city in, in, uh, um, in a, a city in, in Germany. And uh, you have a huge opportunity to go viral because nobody's talking about it. It could be just as interesting as anything else that is happening in America. Okay, so this is finding your niche. Uh, step one, finding your niche, talking about unique value proposition. All right, this is very, very important. So make sure that you you uh, you follow that and and, um, and pay attention to what you're doing and making sure that it's unique. Okay, step two, design your channel branding. So uh, name, it, it, this, is, this is kind of like low priority stuff. It's not as important. Naming isn't uh, as important as say like, what are you going to title your videos? But it's still something that you have to be, that you have to keep in mind. So choosing a name that is memorable, uh, creating a professional logo, blah, 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 right? You know all this stuff. Again, just is all part of the roadmap. So if you're coming from zero, you have this. All right, optimizing your channel for SEO. So I just want to show you this market whisper. This is this is kind of proof in the pudding that it is low priority. The channel keywords, the SEO that they did for their channel, you can see them right here. Uh, it's very small for me, so it's probably even smaller for you. Let's see. Tra there we go. Tra tra trading finance documentary. Those are the keywords that they used to, to SEO this channel. That's it. They didn't keyword, they didn't, they didn't uh, SEO it with Japanese housewives or outsmarting the market or J Japanese market or anything like that. It's got three keywords. This is, this is how low priority this is. Most people are going to come in. They're going to be like, I got to put 500 keywords in there to make sure that it's SEOed correctly. Nope. You need to, you need to focus all that attention on creating a really compelling, a really good piece of content, not necessarily on SEOing the back end of the channel. Uh, another thing here, you know, make sure that your about page is unlocked. So this is their about page. In the quiet dance of trade, we gently guide the market to reveal its most precious stories. Welcome to the Market Whisper, where every whisper blossoms into fascinating narrative. The Market Whisper is a documentary channel about finance trading. Stock. So it's like there's very little SEO even on, on their about page. Most of the SEO is actually found in the transcript of the video. And then also it doesn't need a whole lot of SEO because the content of the video is so compelling. It's so interesting. If this lands on your homepage, you're probably going to be pretty interested in watching it because it's a very compelling thumbnail and very compelling title, which we'll get into here in just a few minutes. So making sure that you're, you're at least following the basics of creating a channel design. All right. Step three, Content planning. This is another thing that's like, okay, you've heard this stuff a lot. So I'm even kind of gloss over it because I really want to get into like the goodies. And then I also want to make sure that I have time for, for the Q and A. So content planning, create a content calendar, batch filming. You guys have heard all this stuff. If you need any more instruction on, on these things, then I would say, uh, I would say there's a lot of YouTube videos that will teach you like good methods for like batch filming and for creating the content calendar. But the, but the point of creating a content calendar and the point of batch filming is that 
when you're first creating a faceless YouTube channel, you need to plan on creating for probably six to nine months where you see very little reward. Sometimes in instance of the, the Japanese housewives video, sometimes videos can take off out of the gate and they can launch your entire channel. That's not really that typical. Most YouTube channels take anywhere from four to six months to really start to see some momentum. And it can be anywhere between a year and two years before you really start making some decent revenue from it. We've, we've been fortunate enough. We've launched YouTube channels that have gone from zero to 20,000 subscribers in about 35 days. Um, we've, we've had some channels that have been monetized within a week and, uh, and we've been able to, you know, we've been able to like kind of crack the code there, but that's not really typical for everybody. So making sure that not only you have a content creator for, for, uh, for you staying consistent, setting habits for yourself, but also for your audience, it's really important for your audience to be able to set a, a schedule around your content. That's that's part of community development 101. It's like get your audience to come back frequently and be able to set a schedule or a routine around your content. Uh, batch filming is uh, is important or batch content creation is important simply so that way you're not having to dedicate multiple hours a week, but you can knock it all out in one or two days and get your entire content laid out for the, for, for the entire month. Um, one of the things, and I'm going to, I think, I know I'm going to mention this here in just a minute, but one of the things that I talk about here is, uh, that I teach is, um, having, having a batch of seven to 10 videos ready to go before you launch, because you want to launch. Well, maybe I'll save that for later. I'm going to save that for later. I'm going to talk about it in just a second. There is a secret to uh, to the launch, and I'll I'll, I'll share that with you. Um, but uh, analyzing comments, you don't want to batch film too far in advance because you want to analyze comments and uh, um, and then it comments in communities and and Reddit for content ideas as you're moving forward. And if you get too far in advance, you might miss opportunities that are dropping right now. That if you were to jump on those opportunities, you could have the the chance of skyrocketing your your content. Okay, so this is where things get really important. Uh, script writing and storytelling. Uh, this is a very, very important section. That's why I've got all these like cool little resources here for you. So there's a couple of ways to create content in the faceless market. And, and I'm sure you guys have all seen this, but there's, uh, there's listicles, right? Top 10 things that uh, dogs do that will surprise you or if, top five funniest videos. Um, there's this versus that. There's a lot of these like dog channels that are like German Shepherd versus Pitbull. And they'll compare and contrast the qualities between the two. So there's a lot of those types of channels. And that, that type of content is actually really easy to create and, and to ideate. What's more difficult, and this is the reason that I'm sharing it with you, is because it's more difficult, which will make it harder to copy, is compelling storytelling content. And so if you can create very compelling storytelling content, then then you can, again, own a market, create a, a unique value, and it'll be harder to copy with AI or with other people who are coming in behind you who are just trying to scoop up your scraps or or ride your coattails to success. Uh, I just had a, a one of our one of my friends, he's created a YouTube channel in the uh, basketball space. And um, he created a video that was called like the untold story of Caitlin Clark. And he did this a few months ago. The video has got hundreds of thousands of views. Now it's still getting thousands of views every single day. And then somebody five days ago created the exact same video, used the exact same title and a very similar thumbnail. And so this is what happens frequently in the faceless channel, uh, faceless channel market. And so if you have compelling stories that have a very specific framework, it'll make them more difficult to copy because not everybody understands how to tell a good story, how to keep an audience engaged. All right. So I gave you guys, uh, I've actually created a, a storytelling framework here for you. So that way you can, you can read through this. Basically what you're doing is you're creating a series of curiosity gaps in your uh, in each of your script. And what that means is that uh, you, some of you have probably heard the term opening loops. So basically what you're doing is you are teasing some outcome that you will 
uh, that you will wrap up later in the video. And so you have a series of teases, opening loops. You have a series of these teases that you then you will that you'll drag throughout the video that you will then close at the end of your video. So you wrap your entire package up with a nice neat bow. That's done with uh, a uh, um, that's done with a, a concept or strategy that we call micro hooking. So it sounds kind of sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Micro hooking. Uh, <laughs> Um, that's, a that's where you, again, open loops with the things that you're saying, the things that you're speaking that will then allow people or open these curiosity gaps, meaning that they will have these unanswered questions. I need to know how this is solved in order to feel a, a form of resolution as an audience member, right? So if I said something like, well, I just did it a minute ago. I said in, in just a minute, I'm going to share, or what did I say? I said, uh, I'm not going to share that right yet. Right now, I'm going to save that till later when I was talking about the the strategy for launching. That's a micro hook. I I engaged you guys. Some of you guys were like, "No, tell me right now," and some of you were like, "I can't wait for him to finish that up." That's that's a micro hook. I opened a loop that I'm going to then close later on. One of the most powerful micro hooks that I use is the phrase. But before I get into that. Let me tell you about this. So you guys, I'm going to talk to you about how to make a million dollars using social media. But before I get into that, let me tell you my background story when I got arrested as a kid, right? Now you're like, okay, he's going to tell me how, how to make a million dollars. But now this story is really interesting. So I opened a loop over here and then I sidestepped and I opened another loop. This is how you keep people engaged on your content. And this is a key tenant to storytelling strategy. But I've got the the entire like, structure here so you can take a look at that um when you have when you have this resource i also created a chat gpt prompt for you based off of a uh, a video based off of a sunny v2 video um and then if you just load this prompt in you can basically give chat gpt any subject and it will create a compelling a compelling video uh, essay structure that utilizes micro hooks and and um twists and turns and all sorts of like interesting writing strategy to create a, a compelling uh, script. Now, again, if I can do this, I'm going to give this to you. If, if I can do this, anybody can do this. And so you can take this and utilize it, but just remember that it, you still have to have that element of uniqueness. And that's where niche comes in very, very handy is making sure that you have a very unique niche so that way even if people are taking these things breaking down your scripts they will uh, they won't be able to catch up to you because you'll be first to the market or because you're so creative with the way that you're you're telling the stories okay so there is a chat gpt prompt there that you can use for your script writing uh, i also created a a series of um uh of uh, resources that you can use and uh it looks like my my assistant who is loading the links here, he's, he left some notes. So I'll make sure those are cleared out before you get it. Uh, so you got some resources that you can use to enhance your writing. If you're like, no, ChatGPT sounds so AI, you can enhance your writing capability with uh, what I put provided in the resources. Okay, and then I also broke down the Sunny V2 script. I used Glasp to download his entire script. So I've got a link to the video here, but you can you can see like the the breakdown of everything uh, all of the the lit literary devices that he uses in his script writing so that way you'll understand why you're putting these things into your scripts that's probably like key for anybody is like why is this important um so i've got that all broken down there as well and again if if you guys any of you guys who came in late um you get a you can you'll have an opportunity to get a copy of this all right, next step is production, right? Voiceover and audio quality. Remember, this is faceless, so you don't need to show your face. You don't need to film anything, but you do need to have good quality uh, voicing so that way it sounds professional and it, and it makes people, uh, you know, the quality is in part more impactful in faceless than it is with face content, right? I can, I can film with the webcam, my face content. And as long as I'm saying things that are valuable enough, people will keep coming back for more because they like what I'm saying. But, but with a faceless channel, that's not always the case. And uh, unless it's intentionally like low quality and that's part of the entire 
unique value proposition. Shoot, I just gave that one away for free. That's that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> Make everything look like it was filmed on a on a uh, 19, 1980s camcorder in your faceless channel. That That's actually super unique. Okay, so professional audio, if you're going to be doing your own audio, you want to make sure that you're investing in a good microphone and noise-free environment. This is this microphone right here. This whole setup is probably seven or eight hundred dollars uh, that I spent for this setup. This is a very high-quality uh, condenser microphone. Um, a voiceover strategy, right? Making sure that you your speaking cadence is such that it's uh, the the vibe of your voice or the vibe of the voice that you use matches the the vibe or the energy or the curiosity the mystery of your scripting um and if if you're doing listicles right higher energy if you're doing true crime darker energy in in <clears throat> in 1929 in 1929 a murder took place <laughs> right now i'm terrible at that don't hire me as a voiceover artist you guys uh but but you understand like when you are doing these types, when you're creating this type of content, the energy of the voice has to match the energy of the video. Otherwise, it will create an off, uh, like a misalignment and balance. And, um, and it'll, it's, it's weird. It's a weird psychological effect. I'm sure some of you guys have experienced content like that, where the voiceover did not whatsoever match the energy or emotion of the content. And, and it's a turnoff. You're like, this is, this is not good because we've been conditioned through documentaries, through the discovery channel th that these things matter. And, uh, and so make sure that you're using the right energy and the right speaking cadence in your voiceover strategy. All right. Hiring a narrator. If you're going to do that, I highly recommend just looking for somebody on Fiverr. Um, I put a link to Fiverr just straight to the the voiceover. I actually have like straight to the editors here as well, but uh, straight to that. So that way you can go and find somebody um, again, listen to their voices, listen to their demos and make sure that they have a cadence and an energy that matches the energy that you're looking for, for your content. Okay. Visuals and B-roll animation. So uh, here's some like resources again, like some free resources here. Pexels, Pixabay, uh, Storyblocks isn't free, but Pexels and Pixabay. Unsplash is another one. Let's just put that in there. Unsplash. Actually, Unsplash might be images only. Um, but, uh, but any of these three websites here have free resources that you can incorporate for visuals. Uh, Storyblocks is, is, um, it's expensive, <laughs> but if you've got a budget for it, then great. Uh, animation and graphics. There are some really cool animation tools that are coming out now that are AI animation. So you might want to look into that. I've seen some stuff. I'm just not as familiar with it to to incorporate it into this stuff. But um, but yeah, you can hire you can hire animators. You can hire these things. But I, I would say if you're just starting a channel, you don't have a big budget then try to bootstrap it as much as possible. Try to avoid using things, resources that are going to be expensive. Um, if you want to hire an editor, here's what I recommend doing. I, I dropped the link here to Fiverr, but I, I just want to show you this anyway. So I typed in, the, the way that I search for this is YouTube faceless editing. And um, and there's like these like cash cow channels. You can type in cash cow editing uh, the, this is a, a phrase that is frequently used. You guys pr probably know this cash cow, um, YouTube automation, right? Number of those phrases are used for this type of content. And I would just look for somebody who's got the best reviews, who is decently priced, or if you guys want, there's another resource. It's onlinejobs.ph. And that's where you can hire an editor straight out of the Philippines that will, that will edit your content for an agreed upon rate. Um, Upwork is another one that you can find. I found actually the, the best editors, uh, most of the editors that work for us, we've, we have some American editors, but most of the editors that work for us, we've gotten from onlinejobs.ph. So uh, it's a great resource for you guys to use. So that way you can, you can find somebody that you could work with. Most editing you should be able to find for 50 to hundred dollars a video for, for this type of content. You can find really good editors for a hundred dollars a video. If you, there is a point of diminishing returns though. If you spend a hundred to two hundred, you might actually just be able to find somebody that's in the seventy-five to a hundred that's just as good as somebody who's charging two hundred dollars a video. 
So my recommendation is to test editors. We actually have a, a an editing testing process that we put people through. I didn't add a link to that. I'll add a link to that before uh, it's sent out or before you guys request this. Uh, I want to make sure that you, you that you know how to test editors and and um, and make sure that somebody's going to be a good fit for you and what you're doing. Thumbnails. Okay, this. Th thumbnails and titles are arguably the most important aspect of growing any YouTube channel. Now, Austin can attest to that. I've had videos. I've had videos that have gone super viral after I've changed thumbnails from bad to decent, and uh, and so thumbnails so are really really important. What's that? Yeah. So true. Just even years later, sometimes like there, I've had old old videos that have been just chilling for several years but getting impressions and if you you know put something that takes it from a two percent click-through rate to a 15 percent click-through rate that video can skyrocket yep 100 percent 100 percent and uh, and it's even more important in the in this space that you uh that you you create compelling thumbnails because people aren't necessarily coming back because they like you. They're coming back because you gave them a reason to come back with when you're doing a face channel, right? When you, when you are doing a talking head channel, channel, YouTube strategy, if I just have my face on a thumbnail. There's a population. There's a portion of the audience that will come no matter what I create. And uh, you don't get that same effect necessarily with, uh, a uh, um, with a faceless channel. And so it's even more important for you to be well-branded so that way people can recognize your thumbnails. You know, one of the, the things that we used to talk about, I used to present on this a lot, was if you were to take your thumbnails, 10 of your thumbnails, throw them into a pile of a thousand other thumbnails, could somebody pick out the ones that are yours? If the answer is no, then you're not branded well enough. Uh, so you want to make sure that there is some recurring theme that people that that's recognizable that will bring people back to your thumbnails. And that's actually something that I didn't write in here, but I'm glad I remembered it. Uh, so people who are just reading this and not watching the training, you're going to miss out on a, a nice little tidbit. Uh, do your research. This is a, another important thing. Research outlier content will help you build an instinct. What do I mean by outlier content? that has more views on the video than there are subscribers on the channel. I'm not talking about like, it got 5,000 views and my channel's only got 50 views. I'm talking like this channel's got 50,000 subscribers and this video's got 2.8 million, right? What are those outliers? One of the best tools that I have, that I use almost every single day to spot outliers is one of 10.com. And I know Mr. Beast has got view stats. I've used view stats, and I still think that one of ten is uh, still more effective than uh, than view stats uh, at finding outliers. I've, I've just gotten used to it. It's really incredible. Let me just take you over there so I can show you. Um, oh, it's gonna make me laugh. Oh, I've never Ooh. heard of this tool. I'm excited. You never heard of this. You never heard of one of ten? I have ne never. Oh man, yeah, it's fantastic. So it will. How do I? Um, bummer. I wanted to actually show you, uh, and I don't have my login information. <laughs> uh, I don't have it readily available. But basically, what it does is it it will only you can you can set filters and say this video has a 10x multiplier based off of its subscribers or based off of the videos in the last 30 or 60 days or a 100x multiplier, and uh, and it will only pull it'll parse that data and it'll only pull uh, thumbnails and titles that meet that requirement so that way you can just have a batch of videos that did incredibly well. You can, you can see a batch of videos. You know what? I'm going to log in because so, yeah, so here, here's one of 10, right? So I, I can say, show me a random, um, and it'll show me, it'll show me all a bunch of random, or I can go by topic. Um, but here's like here are outliers, right? This is a 14 X multiplier. What if a nuclear weapon hits New York city tomorrow? Great thumbnail, great title. That's super compelling. 15 punches that shock the world. Again, these are all like faceless thumbnails too. So you can kind of see the styles. You can kind of pair the, pair the thumbnails with the titles. And now you've got this like more complete picture of, of what does well and why it does well. If you, if you, 
focus on a tool like this, if you get a tool like this um, and you just study these things day in and day out, day out it, you'll build the instinct for what works for certain topics really fast simply because you're just seeing so many of these um, so many of these uh, thumbnail d d title and thumbnail variations or, or uh, um, uh, uh, um, oh my gosh, what's the word? Combinations. So many of these thumbnail and title combinations that, that, uh, that are working, that are doing really well. You can also set in on like, okay, what, here's some filter. Uh, what is, what's popping in the last month? Now you've got stuff that's like, this is still relevant. Um, can I make a thumbnail that's like this Joe Rogan thumbnail that's really compelling? It's a 94x multiplier. That's a huge, that's a huge video. So uh so just keep this in mind. These are great tools. This is like of any tool that I have ever recommended for thumbnails and titles, this is the top one. Like I, I use it literally every single day. It's it's amazing. But yes. It does cost does cost money. You but you can get the plugin for free. And then if you go to YouTube, if you go to YouTube, um, it will it'll show you rankings. Um, let's see if it'll show. Oh, I don't have the plug. I must not have the plugin on this one. Let me see. Do it. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the plugin on this computer. But yeah, if you go to YouTube, it'll actually just show you like the outlier rankings, and that's completely for free. One of 10. Amazing. All right. Uh, test hey, and iterate. Say that Scott, again. Can I, I want to, sh uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick, if that's okay. I want to show you something funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was just looking at, at that outlier thing and, and notice this, uh, like this straight up copycat. So I, I noticed on that screen from this month, right? This is, this is an outlier video for this channel. And so I wanted to find that video. Look at the straight up copycat that this person did this 12 hours ago. Yep. Same from this or that. <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Yep. That's what people do though. Like th this is why I'm saying it's so important to have the unique quality. It's so important to be unique. <laughs> so true. <laughs> sorry. sorry I had to... No, no, no. It's that's a great share. Thanks, man. Okay. Um, let's jump back in here. Okay. Um, okay. Test and iterate, use the multivariant testing tool. Everybody on YouTube has access to YouTube's multivariant. You can upload three videos, three thumbnails at the same time, and then let YouTube tell you which one performs the best. We create, this is, it's a really a pain because we used to only create one thumbnail. Now we create three thumbnails for every video that we upload. And then we let YouTube do the testing after after you land on one, sometimes we'll even test a couple of more and a couple of more. I mean, we've created probably 12, 15 thumbnails for some videos some days just so we can keep testing, keep testing, testing. Um, here's some other like really solid uh, um, thumbnail examples for different types of content. Baron Trump, you, you, some of the things... There's so many, uh, I, w I, I could go into the weeds for hours on thumbnails. And so I'm going to try and keep this like really high level. So curiosity comes from uh, piquing someone's piquing someone's interest uh, when talking about an ideal outcome, right? You were painting a desirable outcome. And, um, and so how to make a million dollars, that's a desirable outcome. You want to have big million dollars. You want to have money on the screen that's like in piles. So that way, People who are watching, who have the desired outcome of making a lot of money, can uh, uh, you know, will see that and they'll be more enticed to click because it's that's what they want. Um, just curiosity, you know, uh, thirty-five actors who perfectly resemble famous people in movies. That's a great title. That's really interesting. And now you've got this, you know, this face of I think that was uh, what's his name, um, Eddie oh Redmayne. Gosh. Yeah, Eddie Redmayne, but it's uh, isn't this um. Who, who is the oh, Stephen Hawking? Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So yes, very interesting. Very compelling. Nobody paid attention. Like th there's a lot of curiosity here. Nobody paid attention to, to what? Oh, it's talking about Spain. What, why is there red? What's with this like warning here? Why the UK is collapsing? A lot of like sensationalism, but a lot of clickability. So uh, keep that in mind. Curiosity brings clickability. If you can get the audience to ask themselves a question, 
when they see your title and your thumbnail, you can generally get them to click because of that curiosity gap. You've created a gap in, in which their brain says, I need to know the answer to this question. And then their body will respond by clicking and watching so that way they can get the, the, the answer. If you can get them to ask curious enough questions, that's how you get them to click faster. That's how you get more people to click. All right. Uh, I, I definitely want to make sure that I've got time. I know we're we're getting close here, but uh, I want to make sure I've got time. Uh, SEO and metadata, you can read through this. Again, this is a low priority. I, I tried to put highlight when it was a low priority. SEO and metadata is just not that important anymore because YouTube can contextualize what's being said in, in the content. So uh, so keep that keep that in mind. All right, engagement. Growth strategies encourage uh, encourage en engagement. Like here's some ways that you can do this. We, we've got some um, some strategies here for for like community tab. Create polls or challenges within the community so that way people feel like they're a part of something, as opposed to just coming and watching content. There's a great guy who who makes documentaries. His name is James Janney, and uh, James he he's created like 20 videos. And he's got multiple millions of subscribers. His channel's exploded. He's got a huge Twitter following. Uh, and he's only got 20 videos, but he's engaging with his community. And that that makes people kind of fall in love with him and want to follow his content. Collaborations and shout outs. If you create content about specific people, and I know Sunny V2, again, you guys will see his script breakdown above. But uh, Sunny V2 has done stuff on Mr. Beast and has gotten even though it's been bad press, right, on social media, a lot of people were interested and watched his video when he's done stuff on Mr. Beast simply because Mr. Beast has called him out or friends of Mr. Beast have called him out. I did a video a couple weeks ago on Dan Co, and uh, Dan actually ended up posting the video in his community tab, and it drove a whole ton of views, uh, relative uh, 8,600 views over to my channel. So it's great. If you say things about people, they'll are they're they're more likely to share the stuff you say about them because they, they find it interesting and they're excited about it um engage bottom line engage with viewers if you're if you're just trying to create a set it and forget it type of youtube automated channel then you're kind of missing a huge key factor in why channels grow and uh, and if you can create and foster a community where people like to be there for the education or for the topic, you know, these are all people, I found my people, these are all people who are interested in, in this topic, then it, it makes it a lot easier to grow. So, so talk to your people, play with your, play with your, your comments, uh, in, enjoy like good example. Oh yes. Billy Gates, my favorite small scale farmer, Billy's artisanal pumpkins. Like, it's just like, have fun with your comments. Uh, so that way people want to come back and engage more. Oh yeah, here's my insider trick, okay? Here's the trick for, for scaling quickly. Launch your channel with at, le at least three videos, all in the same time, all the same time on the same day. And the reason is because most of the success will boil down to if you get your audience to come back and watch more. And so if people on day one are binge watching three videos, YouTube's gonna be like, oh my gosh, this channel has people, people are watching three videos at a time. This is great. That's how we blew up that channel that uh, went from zero to 20,000 subscribers in 35 days. Is we launched with five videos and you could see the analytics. People were going from video to video to video and they were all suggesting each other. We linked them all together in the descriptions. We put cards in each of the videos and people just went, they just came and watched all the videos and the, the channel exploded. Uh, monetization, tracking analytics, iteration. Okay, you can read through monetization. Um, basically, if you want ad revenue, which is primary source of, of revenue for faceless channels, this is how you do it. If you want to do affiliate marketing or sponsorships, it's helpful if you create a channel that is already on a topic that is related to the affiliate that you're producing. For example, if you do top 10 software breakdowns, right? Having affiliate links for each of those softwares in the comments, will go insane. Like people, especially for like the number one resource, because people will take your recommendation simply because you're, you're giving them an opinion. And, um, and so if you're creating affiliate marketing campaigns, make sure your content matches the affiliate marketing campaigns, um, uh, tracking analytics and iterating. So a couple of things that are 
extraordinarily important. Average view per viewer, AVPV, is a metric that you can track on the back end of YouTube. This is how many videos are they coming back within any given within a given period of time? How many how many videos are they watching within a given period of time? And the higher that is, the more likely it is that YouTube is going to spread your content out to a wider total addressable market. So your goal when you get on YouTube is not only to get people to click, like you need to have good CTR, but your goal is get people to come back, get people to come back, get people to come back. If you do nothing but get people to come back, your YouTube channel will do very, very well. Uh, watch your data and make sure you're adjusting based on data. Um, it, retention charts is the last thing I'm going to go over. And then again, if you guys want this, uh, we'll have this as a resource. Um, but uh, retention data, if you look at your audience retention graphs, this is when uh, this is where you, um, you you know you look at the little individual spikes here, and you say, okay, what was I doing right here? Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There you go. Okay, see these like little like dips here, and then it spikes up again. What did I do right here to get people to come back? And then how can I do this more throughout the video? What did I do right here to get people to come back? How can I do that more? How do I prevent this downward slope and keep the audience retention, the audience as engaged as possible? Studying your retention graphs is so important for increasing the quality of the content that you're creating. It, it, this is another thing that if you do this and you evolve your content, this will set you apart from other people. This will help you create better content. People can't copy they can't copy your scripts word for word. And so they can't copy your literary devices word for word or exactly. And so if you're studying this and you're changing the way that you write your scripts based off of these retention graphs, you will crush it and nobody will be able to keep up with you. I've got some, this additional, I thought that the twi twi Twitter thread was pretty solid. So I included that in there as well. Um, anyway, that is the roadmap. I hope that that was super val valuable for you guys. Uh, again, if you guys want this, you'll have an opportunity to grab it. Uh, questions. Let's do this. I know that that was a lot. Uh, sorry. I, I went super into the weeds there. That was a ton. That was, that was so value packed. Yeah. Everybody is going to want to rewatch this one and, and take notes if you weren't <laughs> already doing so y'all. So this video will be on our syllabi YouTube channel, uh, tomorrow. Um, Jao, if you could link to the YouTube channel in the chat on here, Scott, thanks so much for doing this, man. Uh, yeah. this was, this was incredible. Um, is there a way for them to get access to that document? How did you want to send that over? Yes. Um, can I, can I give it to you and, and you just put it in an email yeah. or how, does that work? Yeah. 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 That. So everybody, everybody that's in here, we will email you that link uh, to that document after we get that from Scott. Um, I have to, uh, to bounce out of here. I got a, a podcast interview, but, uh, uh, everybody stick around, ask Scott some questions, Jow, Dawn, uh, take it from here. Thank you so much, brother. I'll yes. catch up with you. Thanks, Austin. Thank yep, you, yep, yep, Austin. No All righty. So guys, thank you so much, Scott, for that presentation. So everyone, um, do you have any questions that you'd want to, if you still have a few minutes to stay with us, Scott, at least five, is that okay to answer a few questions if there are any? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I do. So I'm, I'm seeing where, where people can contact me. So uh, Rafiti, R-A-F-F-I-T-I, -I, it's like graffiti without a G. Uh, that's, that's my channel. My YouTube channel is Rafiti. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. It's I am Scott Simpson. Let me just type it. I'll type it in the chat at I'm, I'm Scott Simpson. Uh, that is, uh, that's my Instagram handle. No P in Simpson. Um, so you guys can connect with me over there. You can connect with me on my YouTube channel, Rafiti, uh, or follow me on Facebook. We can be friends. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. So yeah. I think I have one question here from Shane. Okay. Chicken yes. or the egg? Do you start with picking your niche or do you look at possible affiliates that may be lucrative and then build your niche from there? So it depends on where you want to drive the revenue from. If if you want uh if if you want to have more potential at at uh higher levels of income, I would definitely say go go into it with an affiliate strategy now one of the things though that you're gonna have to 
one of the things that you're going to have to kind of reconcile is that if you go into it with a business mindset <laughs> and not a lot of passion, there's a saturation point that you're going to hit where you're like, is this even worth it? Right after four or six months of doing content with nothing to show for it, you're going to be like, is there, is this ever going to make money? Whereas <laughs> when it's a passion, it's a lot easier to keep yourself motivated. So keep that in mind. It's, it is a, you know, you, you have to like be really introspective and, and ask yourself, am I, am I able to like stick this out? What's my track record of sticking something out? Do I need a, a carrot dangling uh, to keep me going? Or am I just really excited about this, this topic and I could talk about it for years? So uh, I would say it depends on your goals, but, uh, but factor that into the equation as well. All right. Thank you. Um, they're actually asking for your social links. So probably what I can do is I'm going to gather everything from uh, and uh, probably if you're going to type it here, I'm also going to gather them and send them through email. That way they also have yes. it in the email once um, we send out the recording and the copy of your document. All right. Uh, I think we have another question here. OK, from Zuli Rodriguez. Um, stupid question, but I am at a point where I cannot create more Gmail accounts. Probably she's creating as well uh, YouTube accounts. Google says use number phone too many times. I don't know if this is something that you can answer for her. And maybe create emails with AOL or Hotmail. Thanks in advance. So I think it's mostly about recreating or creating more Gmail accounts for social platforms. Um. So you, you don't you don't need to create a new Gmail account. You can create YouTube channels under the same Gmail account. I, I probably have like 20 YouTube channels under my same Gmail account. So you don't necessarily need that. What you'll run into more frequently than that is uh, when you're verifying a YouTube channel in order to be able to add custom thumbnails, you might run into the issue of having a phone number that's been used too many times. I think you use a phone number maybe five or 10 times. But a Gmail account, you should be able to build multiple channels under the same Gmail. All right, awesome. Thank you. And from mm -hmm. Tyrone, I'm a newbie in this field. How did you start? Topics you start with, and then how did you scale your channel? Uh, so I, I have the type of brain that is always testing things. Um, I've built channels in real estate. I've built channels in uh, uh, the family space. I've built channels in the kids space. I've built channels on helping influencers learn things. I've built channels. I mean, so many different things. Uh, so really, whatever I'm passionate about, I kind of will sit down and and um, write all my ideas down first. And if I can get into the 30s of like ideas, then I know that that's a, a, a viable idea because in reality, you're going to be like 30 to 50 videos before you start to see some momentum. And if you can, if you can crank out those videos and get enough momentum to the point where the comments start coming in, then you can listen to the comments and start creating content based off of what your audience is asking for. Or if a video pops off and gets a hundred thousand views, you can just double down on that video over and over and over again and uh, and keep creating like similar spin-offs that YouTube will keep ranking you for because you're you're trending for that um for that concept. So where I would start is what are you interested in? What are you most passionate about? And uh, and th that's where I'd start. Write down all of the ideas that you can think of for titles, do some competitive research. Are there other people who are doing similar things? And then create, you can, you know, you can add titles from those guys into the equation too, so that way you can just keep fueling it with more and more ideas. But, uh, but the, the other thing is like, uh, once you have that, uh, once you have that list down, you can only do so much prep work. Once you have that list completed, just start and then, and then kind of allow yourself to evolve with, allow your strategy strategy to evolve with um with with the commentary with you know just by staying plugged into this little niche pocket all right great and i think we're going to take in around two to three more questions um sure. uh, we're kind of in overtime right now but um, i hope that's okay with you scott uh -huh. uh, all right um so we have one from rob if you have mul multiple interests that you would like to create contact for but they are vastly different topics 
would it be better to build separate channels per topic or a centralized channel which point to each topic? Separate channels for every individual topic, and then you can you can link them all together in featured channels. So you can actually create a like a, a little thing on your homepage that's like, here's our other channels, and then put all of the links to those other channels on every single one of the pages so your audiences can kind of go back and forth depending on their interests. That's what I'd recommend. Thank you. And we have mm -hmm. one from Amanda. I'm a life coach from the USA, but I live in Spain. Love to travel. Does this seem like I could make a faceless channel incorporating all these and also tell people about my life coaching business? Uh, so merging life coaching with travel, yes. But, but I would say if you're a coach, you really want your face to be on the content. It's very difficult to convince someone to work with you when you're faceless because there's a there's there's always kind of a lack of trust um when when they can see your eyes and look into your eyes and see your mannerisms and hear the passion in your voice the trust actually will con the trust is what does the conversion the converting process it it helps you close more sales could you do it yes you could it'll just be much more difficult so i, I would if you were to do a faceless channel on that i i would definitely be like um, I, I would it'd probably be something around travel, um, you know, unique places that you're going to. And, um, and then if you do all of the voiceovers, then you could, you could sound more personable that, and that, that actually might build some trust, but, um, but yeah, if I, if I'm building a business, uh, as opposed to just looking for ad revenue, my, my goal, like I, I know that I'm, it's going to be a hundred times more impactful for me to show my face. All right. And I think we're going to go with one last question from Nicole. Um, if your yeah. YouTube account is growing very slowly, at what point do you decide it might be time to try another niche versus keep trying to build the existing one? Th that's actually a really good question because it might, you might be thinking you're doing everything right. And, um, and I, I mean, I've seen this all, like, I see this all the time. Somebody be like, I've been doing this for years and nothing is working. And then I'll get on their channel and be like, well, your titles aren't uh, intriguing enough. Your thumbnails have a whole bunch of small text on it and I can't read anything. So sometimes it's a matter of just like getting an extra set of eyeballs on, on your channel to, to, uh, um, to tell you what you're doing wrong and then pivot and adjust. Uh, th there really hasn't been a channel unless you've run run um like pay if, unless you bought like subscribers or bought views uh, i've i've never really had a channel that i couldn't revive or i couldn't see some pretty re, some success relatively quickly after giving some solid advice and having the, the, the person take that advice and like roll it out uh so what i'd say is have somebody give it a, a another pair of eyes and um uh, or even dig through your analytics and just see if there's anything that stands out. I, I will say I, I did have one channel one time, now that I recall, that I, I could not revive. And it was because it was right after COVID. It was a doctor and he had talked seven years ago about the flu vaccine. And um, and YouTube had had been suppressing anything that was contrary to like you know, the, the, but the beliefs of the WHO. And, and so there are, sometimes there are things, topics that you can talk about that will get your channel shadow banned. And so you got to be careful about that, but it, it's not like really frequent unless you're like diving into politics, you're diving into policing or violent type of material, or you're diving into medicine. That's this one. That's like kind of difficult. So hope, hope that helps. All right. Thank you so much, Scott. So I think that's everything we have for now. Um, we're really happy for everything that you've shared. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. all your knowledge and secrets to our syllabi users and those that are new. Um, basically, for those who are new, I know that more than half of those who attended here are actually new in syllabi. So we sent out here a discount code for you guys if you want to try it out. And um, we have Dawn as uh, our demo support team here. So please 
least book a demo if you really want to uh, try syllabi out, uh, if you want to go for faceless. Um, and as for the document of Scott, um, let's just uh, watch for it in the email that we'll be sending out. Um, Scott will be sharing it with Austin and we'll incorporate it in the email together with this recording. Uh, and if you have more questions, feel free to message us in all the platforms that we're in, including Discord, especially Discord. Our Discord um, uh, group is actually growing really fast and uh, Austin is actually everywhere. So you can really communicate with him there. Um, any last words, Scott, before we wrap up today? Just get started. You know, if if you've been holding back and you're like, I'm going to do this someday. Some days today, get it going. You got this. Connect with me on Instagram, you guys, and on, on YouTube. Love to chat more. Thanks, yes, everybody. That's great. Thank you so much, Scott. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. See you again next week, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.